Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, today's topic is parametric amplifier and pin diodes. We'll discuss the construction and uh, working details of these two devices. First is parametric amplifier. As the name indicates, it is an amplifier and important uh, characteristics of such amplifier is that in this case, the reactance is varied and accordingly the voltage amplification takes place. In the last video, we have discussed that there is one diode which is called variable reactance diode. So reactance of such diodes can be varied. The same principle is used in parametric amplifier. Here reactance is varied and accordingly the amplification or voltage amplification takes place. <clears throat> so parametric amplifier is high frequency low noise amplification or low noise amplifier. It uses time varying reactance for amplification. So capacitive reactance is varied at high frequency than the signal frequency. That means variation takes place at somewhat higher frequency as compared to the signal frequency. Now we will consider one simple circuit, consider one LC circuit that is a circuit consisting of inductor and capacitor in parallel. So such a, such a LC circuit, such a LC tank circuit, consider that this circuit is operating at its natural frequency. Now if the voltage is at positive maximum, then in that case, the plates of a capacitor are pulled apart. So whenever voltage is at positive maximum, initially this, this LC circuit is operating at not natural frequency. Now whenever positive input voltage appears, the plates of a capacitor are pulled apart. So certain kind of work done is required. In that case, that work done which is required to pull apart the plates of capacitor uh, creates the voltage amplification. So in this case, the plates are pulled apart and because of which the capacitance reduces. Now the question arises why capacitance should reduce if the plates are pulled apart. Consider a parallel plate capacitor. We know that capacitance in parallel plate capacitor is epsilon A upon D. A is the area, epsilon is epsilon 0, epsilon r, that is permittivity and D is the distance between plates. So if you if you are pulling out the plates, uh, then D, this distance D increases because of which the capacitance reduces. Now the voltage and capacitance as well as charge Q are related as V is equals to Q by C. As we discussed, whenever the plates are pulled apart, in that case D reduces, so D increases. So C reduces, capacitance reduces and according to this equation, when capacitance reduces, voltage increases, this creates amplification. This is called voltage amplification. So in this way, by changing the reactance of capacitance, the voltage amplification takes place. This is the basic principle of working of the parametric amplifier. Now its advantages, it is low noise amplification uh, amplifier or amplification device. Because in this case, the resistance is not involved. Everything is managed by changing the reactance. And there is no thermal noise generated in this amplification process. Then its applications includes long range radar systems, then satellite uh, ground stations and microwave ground wave communication system. Next is pin diodes. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this draw and explain the working of a uh, pin diode with respect to three different conditions. So as the name indicates, it is P, I, N diode. We know that P and N are normal regions. In between the two regions, certain layer that is called intrinsic layer is placed. So the name is P, I, N diode. This is the structure, rather constructional details of uh, pin diode. So this is P plus material, N plus material. As the name indicates, plus N indicates that they, those things are heavily doped. So this is P plus region, N plus region. Certain contacts are taken out from these two regions. And in between P and N region, intrinsic layer, that is I layer, is placed. Now, it is this particular device is made from high resistive P type silicon material, whereas this P plus region is obtained by depositing this boron atoms and 
n plus layer is obtained by depositing phosphorus atoms. This intrinsic layer, I layer, is highly resist to P region. Actually, it is the name is intrinsic, but actually in practical cases, it is highly resist to P region. We'll consider three different conditions as far as this operation of pin diode is concerned. First is open circuit condition. We know that open circuit means we are not applying any voltage across this device. So under the open circuit condition, electrons from this I layer start moving, start shifting towards this P plus layer. So they will get combined, they will get combined with the excess holes in P plus region. Similarly, holes from I region will start moving towards N plus region. These are the holes which are moving from intrinsic layer towards I plus, uh, towards N plus region. N plus region has certain excess electrons. So these holes which are traveling uh, from I layer combines with excess electrons in N plus region. Uh, ideally, the number of holes and number of electrons that are moving away from this I layer towards P plus region and towards N plus region must be equal. But practically, these values are not equal because of this. That means since the uh, number of holes and number of electrons that are moving towards a respective region are not equal, certain voltage exists even if the zero, even if this diode is open circuited. That means you are not applying any bias, then also certain uh, certain voltage exists across this structure. Next is reverse bias condition. We know that in case of reverse bias, this P type of uh, P layer is should be connected to the negative terminal of supply and should be connected to the positive terminal of supply. In that case, maximum electron and holes swept out of the material very simple logic because this is p type if it is connected to n terminal negative terminal of the source then maximum number of holes will come out from this similarly this 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 is n layer if it is connected to positive terminal of supply maximum number of electrons gets attracted so maximum electron and holes swept out from from the material because of this p and n layer becomes thicker the length of depletion region, in this case, we know that whenever any diode is reverse passed, the depletion region goes on increasing. But <clears throat> in this case, the length of depletion region is approximately equal to the intrinsic layer. And by increasing reverse bias, this RB means reverse bias, by increasing reverse bias, the length of depletion region does not change. Therefore, reverse capacitance remains constant under the reverse bias condition. Third condition is forward bias condition. It is a usual uh, operating mode of uh, diode. So it should be connected in forward bias. That means this P region should be connected to positive supply and should be connected to negative supply. So in such cases, carriers from P and N region diffuse into I layer because we are forward batching the device. So carriers from P plus and N plus region start diffusing into the I layer, into the intrinsic layer. Due to this, the P and N layer becomes thinner. But since the carriers are diffuse, getting diffused from P plus and N plus region into the I layer, the carrier concentration in intrinsic layer increases. So carrier concentration of I layer goes on increasing. The current in this case is due to both holes as well as electrons and the voltage drop, VD means voltage drop, voltage drop across I layer is very small in case of forward bias condition. So this is about the working of pin uh, diode as far as the three modes, open circuit condition, or zero bias, then reverse bias and forward bias is concerned. Now applications. See, whenever this pin diode is operated in the reverse bias, it produces very high impedance. When it is operated in forward bias, it produces comparatively low impedance. So such device is ideal to act as a switch. So it is uh, used as a switch, then used in amplitude modulation of the signal. Then it is used as a phase shifter and a limiter. So dear students, that's it for today's session. So thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this video.